today we'll be discussing journey builder considerations i'll request you to come to my blog and type and see integrations and then you'll find multiple blocks on journey builder consideration okay so if you open this considerations for journey builder i have elaborated in this blog how emails are sent out from marketing cloud uh, how the jobs are created and then how the email is rendered based on the header body and the footer and how it is sent to the queue and how it bundles the email here in the considerations we are more discussing on the data model filters journey configuration activities and the content complexity i would request you all to come to this blog and read it for yourself okay in this blog i have not yet mentioned about high watt watermark so before discussing high watermark let's directly jump into our marketing cloud instance let's go to data extension and and the data extensions let's create few data extensions here let's say i'll call this as d1 and i click on complete now let's add few records into this data extension let me create two more records same values so i have created four records okay now let's duplicate this and call it as d2 and i would want to make this subscriber key as the primary key right and i want to edit this and make it as a sendable data extension let me also duplicate this and let's call this d3 no and let's go to automation let's create an automation and let's give the name as i watermark then let's configure this as tomorrow state say hourly and never and let's bring the query activity let's say i watermark and let's write a query a very simple query let me pull the attributes from the one from the one okay validate okay for this warning it's always good that you have a where clause and say email is not null and click next the action type will be override and then we will add those records into d2 okay and let's save this let's go to the query studio
and right click select custom object e from d to okay let's run this let's give an alias as index so there are no records so obviously this value is empty let's run this query now Okay, so our automation runs successfully. Let's go to D2 and you can see there is one record, right? So out of that four records that we have in the D1, we got the D2 with one record because this automation is an override activity and we have the primary key to the subscriber key definition. Now, let's run this query and let's see what is the custom object key. So you can see the indexing is 5. Okay. Let's run this query again and see what happens. Then once Select the activity, click and run, run once. So this is complete. Let's go to D2, refresh this. And we still have the same one record. Now let's go to Query Studio and click on Run. Now you can see the indexing is 9. From 5, it incremented with 4. Right? right? So every time this automation is running, what it's doing is, is basically creating a temporary data extension and then it's inserting into the target data extension something. I had also created a data extension D3. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is create a journey. Let's give a name as my watermark. Let's create a multi step journey. Let's select data extension as D3. Okay, so I'm going to select D3 as my data source. Then let me add a email. Let's compose this email. Let's create a new email. Select it from a template. Then my watermark demo. Click next. Give a high watermark demo. Next, then it's configured. Fine, and let's select. What I also want to do is to create one more email. Similarly, I'll create another email.
let's select this one high watermark demo 2 okay let's give this high watermark demo 2 click next and let's close this okay then let's change this time to three minutes not three days three minutes and this one as also let's say this is 15 minutes then journey setting this is quite important so here i'll say re-entry anytime okay then i'll come to that address configuration things like that later let me save this journey okay let's go back to the automation let's go to the very activity click on the target d edit yeah now i want to change this to d3 okay let's finish save let's go to the journey builder select the schedule and select automation here we'll set the schedule to this high watermark automation and for contact evaluation we'll say bring only new records added after the journey activation fine and click on summary then validate so this means that we do not have the email address attribute in our data extension so let's get back to our data extension here we have the email attribute but the type is string so this does not allow us to change the data type we need to delete this particular attribute let's create an attribute say the same attribute email and mark this as email address okay and you can give it any of this option of required or not required so for now i'll say not required fine let's go to the journey builder because obviously the fields that we updated here with the email address so it's better for me to delete this and reconfigure okay so let's drag this data extension select the data extension that's d3 And click on done. Select the schedule. Select automation. Set schedule. And select high watermark. Evaluate records. Only new records after activation. Summary done. Let's go to the journey settings. Everything's fine. Let's validate and click on activate. Let's activate this journey. Now, let's go to our automation. Okay. Now, the journey activity is also added to our automation. Fine. Now, let's run this journey. Before that, let's validate how many records we have in our D. We do not have any record. Okay. Select all activities, run. And the trigger is fired. Let's go to the journey. So one record evaluated. Okay. So contact is getting attempted to be entering into the journey.
let's refresh this. Let me also open one new tab and let's go to the email studio. Let's go to the tracking. Under tracking, I'll go to journey builder tracking. Journey builder sense, I watermark. version 1 and you see 1 is completed okay so if this is not reflecting I can validate it from the tracking for the journey sense let's refresh this okay so 1 has been entered the journey 1 record entered the journey right so from here, you can see where that particular record is. So the contact can be to the sasiagmail.com is in the wait activity, it's waiting. Now, let's read on this automation. And if you remember, the journey setting for this is re-entry anytime. Right, and we have said evaluate only new records, right? But our automation is an override. So, what happens next? Let's run, save this, and run this automation. Select all, run. Let's go to the journey. Let's refresh the journey and see what's happening here. Yeah. So the first record has basically entered the second email activity and now is waiting in the second wait period, which is waiting for 15 minutes. Right. What we can do is also from the hill, we can check that record. So you can see it's waiting, right? So you can see it is waiting here. Okay, in this step, let's go to that automation. So this automation has ran successfully. Now, let me close this. Let's evaluate this. So you can see two contacts are being evaluated. Okay. So here the contact got evaluated. It got completed and also it got it received the email. So, the same record got entered into the journey, right? So, if you want to view these records, so both the records got entered, right? So, what was our journey setting? Entry, anytime. But in this case we have the same record there's nothing we have changed if you want to see by the attribute values right so why that happened because in this query we are using override hope you understand this override activity in your automation and when your journey setting is entry anytime the records keep entering the journey again and again right so you should avoid using override 
query activity in your automation when you are configuring journey with the journey setting as entry anytime. I hope you like this video. If you have any query or questions, do let me know. See you all. Thank you. Bye.